There we go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, Chief, I hate to say this, but I got a little heartburn over this budget. Um, I understand the addition of the police officer, but when I look at the whole budget, we're up 50% from 2019. And that, I'm just going back that far because that's what's on my sheet and I was lazy to go back farther than that. And so I'm just wondering if, you know, we are maybe looking at, we could make some changes someplace else and the reason I'm saying this is because when I went back and looked at our revenue if I take our um, transfers in out of our revenue and maybe that's not the correct way to do it but our revenue is up 41 percent from 2019 to now and so I'd, I'd like to see our budgets stay you know comparable to that if we could and maybe they are and I'm just missing something. It's 16 or 17 because this says 17. 17. It, with, well, with, with with our 16 officers and then yeah, one administrative. Oh. Yeah. So now, right now, we're 16, 15 officers and an assistant. Right. But then you can have four deputy administrators. Well. And then we've got included in there a new vehicle and new equipment, and since it'll probably won't be a, we gotta buy all new equipment. So the cage, the console, the light bar, everything. Speaking of equipment or vehicles, um, as you remember at the last council meeting, the council approved purchasing from Carl's when one becomes available. I think it was the next day, Tuesday or Wednesday, we got a call from Lamb Motors that we have a VIN number so, <laughs> we'll see how that transpires. Well, hopefully it's a 23. 
Oof. Um, other than that, no real major changes in either the communications or the auto service. And once again, I always caution the council with fuel. It's kind of a crapshoot. You know, we get a fuel spike, and it has happened before. Um, so we really don't play too much with the fuel numbers, even though if you look historically, we've been below 30. Um, Our metro user speed went up quite a bit, too, and the equipment for it, which we don't really have control over. Correct. Right. That actually historically has come in quite under that, but there's a formula that we use to budget, and at the end of the year when they have savings, they give us a credit. So you know, it's, it's our budgeted amounts for the last five or six, I don't know, we've been with it, has been um, quite a bit under, or the actual amount has been quite a bit under our budgeted, but I don't know if they're going to give us a credit or at the end of the year or what, so I can add my normal. Well, and I certainly want to make sure that our police officers are paid where they, where they need to be paid. My concern is, from a council perspective, and this really falls on all the departments, is that when the wages go up, like, what was our increase last year? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. This year, it's three. Three, which is typical, but mm -hmm. that eight and a half. But then the insurance goes up 10%, and the Social Security goes up, and it's just a snowball that can roll down the hill really fast. And I just think that we need to be cognizant of that and always aware of that. I don't want our people to be underpaid by any means, but I also think we have to be aware of those, you know, of how it can get out of control. And when we, when we look at the insurance portion of a new hire, we always assume uh, family coverage instead of individual coverage. So it's a significantly higher cost projected. Chief, uh, we're looking at going to 17 FTE. How many FTE did we have back in 2019 where these numbers started? Probably less. We had we had 13 officers back in 2019. So going from 13. Yeah. So so going from 13 to a 17 on here, and we're talking about a 50 percent increase in total budget over that time period. I think that's it's logical. Yeah. Well, there were 14. We had 13 officers that we had. We were at 14. 14 full time. Yeah. yeah, I get confused because we had that little thing last year. Um, anything else, police? If not, fire department. Um, they're a long-standing agreement Sorry with the fire department is their professional services and Capital equipment budget goes up the same as our levy. So that's plus CPI plus growth What's 7.22%? That's what we've been doing um, You know 161,000 in equipment looks like a lot of money and I say I think I say this every year, but Pumpers start out at about 750 now, and that's just a basic. Usually, a pumper is going to run you about a million. And then I've also got uh, still in there the ambulance subsidy. Pretty good. Um, you know, I think like everything else, my conversations with with Mr. Major um, staffing. You know, just like everybody else, uh, having some tough time keeping 
up to speed with staff. You know, for instance, I just saw an ad on TV the other day for Midwest Rail Car, $5,000 sign-on bonus and $30 an hour. And they're, they're not finding anybody. So it's a very, very tight labor market. I know talking with Mr. Major, he's recruited some um, paramedics from the hospitals. Because, they, yeah, they, they've got multiple employers. They're working full-time at Avera, for instance, and then they may be working full-time or part-time here, or Paramedics Plus, is that who's over in Sioux Falls? Yeah. So they kind of bop around from service to service. Well, I'm staying at 50 for all of And it's, it's, a, it's a very cheap investment for ambulance service. Uh, building inspections. Really, the only changes there are in the, the projected wages and insurance. Traffic. We've got uh, a couple of things. The corridor study going on with Sioux Falls. That's the Holly Corridor. And then proposed ADA action and ADA action plan. Now, those are subject to 8020 grants from Thank you. I couldn't remember MPO. Um, traffic lights, 65,000. 30,000 of that is for controllers at Sioux and Park. Okay. But we are doing that this year. Right. That's not the no, it's not. Those are the RRFDs. Okay. So we're looking at three of those. So in the reviewed column, we will reduce that down to 35,000. Because like I said, we're going to do the traffic light at Sioux and, and Park this year. The loops are bad. So in order to fix the loops, we'd have to tear up the street. So we're going to buy a camera system. And we're going to try to get that done soon. So when that is for the crosswalk? Will yeah. Uh, yeah, the crosswalk will get in this year. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they've talked to Big Al's to do that over. Or is it? Yeah. Correct. Crosswalk this year. It should be done this week yet. And then the RRFDs we'll, we'll look at for purchasing and installing next year. Those are those rapid flashing things that people tend to ignore. How long does it take to complete the crosswalk? That's the question. They will. At Lancer, yes. And that's included. That's next. That's. Yep, that's the next page. Highway and streets. We've got under professional services $15,000 for hopefully one of the last times we do anything with Park Maple as a joint project with Sioux Falls, the county, and Split Rock Township. Uh, if you look under equipment, Lancer light, 304000 That's just to install the traffic lights out at Lancer and Holly. Yeah. As we take a look at that intersection, uh, I think it's five million total for the intersection. Because there's a lot of drainage that has to be addressed as well. Yep. And we're planning on taking that Lancer light out of fund balance. Um, paved streets. We've got Express Avenue, which is part of the Exit 406 project. That's that back entry into um, Tailgaters and Holiday Inn. And since they're, I don't want to say they're closing, yeah, they're closing one of the driveways, aren't they? Or is it right in, right out? Right in, right out. Right in, right out. So we need a back way into Holiday Inn. So we figure that's about a half a million, and that'll be taken out of fund balance as well. And then there's also sewer and water work involved with 406, which is in the sewer and water funds. One business, I've talked with one business owner, and he is very upset with it, uh, specifically if he has to shovel snow on the sidewalk. Yep. 
at least in my conversation with him, he's not happy about losing his full exit entry point. But no, but it's DOT's control. So what it is is the folks that are northbound on Split Rock will have to take a left onto Ash and come into Tailgaters the back way. They're not going to be able to come in the front driveway anymore. We do not encourage that. We don't, but they can. I know. I know. Oh, God. Yes. Yep. Yep, just locals. And I think we're smart enough to figure out how to get there. Uh, next page snow removal. Uh, the big thing there is we need a new dump truck. We're going to be replacing it in 2005. So those are not cheap. Um, And then under storm drainage, we've got the Big Sioux Wreck storm reconstruction at $1.3 million, which we're going to be taking out of fund dumps, which, which we've talked about over the years. Well, that storm sewer was probably put in, when was that subdivision done? 90s? Mid-90s? Yeah, we've had the outflow stru outfall structure is pulled apart and it's eroded. So good. So Tammy's been working with. I went through it though. I found it. I went through it and found it though. Oh God. <laughs> it's bad. Tammy's been working with GF and P for two years now, three or four, to try to get this project done. Um, hopefully. We're bidding it out this fall. Uh, sidewalks and crosswalks. We've got fifty thousand in there, just like the last or this year for sidewalks, and there's one hundred fifty thousand in there for a shared use path. Once the budget's done, then we can prioritize. Uh, weed control stays the same. Next page, transit is our, our contract with rocks. Animal control stays the same. That's contracted out to the Sioux Falls Humane Society. West Nile, we've cut down a little bit. Hopefully it's, no, I shouldn't say hopefully it's another dry year. I know, I know, I shouldn't say anything. Uh, recreation on page 20 something. 26, thank you. Yeah, um, she's coming to park committee Wednesday. To give a report. report. And then the 6000 is is what we pay the VFW for the senior citizens' use of their room every is it Wednesday? Wednesday? Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Swimming pool.
Hey, Sioux Falls is closing pools before we do. Sioux Falls is closing pools before we do. No, we do not. Fire department's even in Sunday, though, for training. Uh, big thing there is sandblasting and painting and caulking the pool. It's been a few years since we've we've done it, so it needs to be sandblasted and get all the old paint off. Caulk what needs to be caulked and then painted. Um, we'll say your your staff. Uh, we spend a lot of time at the pool. Unbelievable. They, there's some that are there doing um, teaching our, my kids in the morning at like 9 a.m. and then we're there at night and they're there till nine o'clock at night. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just they're making yeah, we, some, hopefully making some good money. We've got some of the folks and we're pretty flexible on how they schedule. But some of the older ones they'll put in 60 plus hour weeks every week of this, and it's I mean it's good money. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, just normal updates, and then uh, we purchase beefed up chairs every year. So hopefully one day we won't have to buy so many chairs. The old white plastic ones are pretty cheap. Parks department. Nothing on the first page. Utilities are that, up quite a bit. Yeah, that's just us. Do, do the associations move in utilities there, and then the revenues are coming on the revenue side. Right now, I'm kind of offsetting it, but we, we're charging kind of more now and more associations. So I just want to make the revenue come, all the revenue for all of the utilities come in the revenue side, and then all the expenditure will come out the expenditure side. So that's why it's easier. On the next page, under the capital improvements portion, we've got 30000 for tennis courts at the school. Uh, they're resurfacing, so we're sharing that cost. And then list number one is the equipment showing a pickup, a Kubota, a Gator, and then a bucket painter. And then list number two is the Aspen Playground surfacing and playground down at Aspen Park behind the north uh, concession stand. It's about 20 plus years old, roughly. So it's time to kind of rotate that out, put in the new, I'm assuming, poured in place surfacing, like we did at Tallgrass. So this conversation came up before I was on council, but did anything ever get figured out with the lights at the tennis courts? The school there? Yeah, we gave them all to the school. And then we're, we're splitting the cost of maintenance. But shedding them off. Yeah. yeah. It's up to them. Yeah. They're in their tennis courts. Perfect. Well, I don't know why we have <laughs> Well, it's one of those things that we entered into an agreement, not a formal agreement, but we shared in the cost to build the original ones. Original ones. Eleven thousand people. <laughs> yes. Uh, list number two: lights. Uh, we're looking. We're looking at new lights on Field B, which is the high school field. So all of the lights except for Field A, um, down at Aspen Park, were donated. I don't want to say castoffs from Sioux Falls. Yeah, we got the lights from Sioux Falls, and when they we got the lights, they just cut the poles off, so the poles are actually shorter than they should be, which creates a potential liability. So we're looking at uh, new lights on Field B, wayfinding signs in the fields, and then McCarty T Tower needs some some mild repairs. Yeah. No, we, we've got that new boom mower.
Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's, it's time we need to invest some money in there to tighten it up a little bit. It, it shakes. Uh, forestry and nursery, we've got our trimming program, which is the boulevard trees that we do every year. And then we've also got the ash tree removal. Hopefully, Raleigh's been working with a gentleman for mulching. Uh, the past few years, we've hired um, Sukup to come in and grind up the trees. We think we have a line on a guy with a bigger grinder, big tub grinder, that will get the chips down to a more manual size. And then he will take all the chips as well. And as of now, it's free because he sells the chips to Poet. If you want to see a site, watch a, a stump that big get ground up. It's kind of cool. Tree. Base, excuse me. So as we've talked about before, the ash tree removal is going to be an ongoing thing for a while. Yeah, next six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Uh, next page, economic development. No major changes there. And then promoting the city, the big thing there is the Henkel rebate, which we've also increased the sales tax revenue to offset the Henkel rebate, or at least what we anticipate the Henkel rebate to be. And the other oh, one is decorations. Decorations. Um, Christmas decoration. Uh, this is, is sad news, but the big pine tree by the museum that we usually light up every year uh, is probably on its last Christmas season. It's, it's, so what this would be would be a new metal lighted fake Christmas tree. Sorry. We, we can't buy a full growing pine tree. Retirement, uh, you know, I wish we could uh, propose some cuts there, but no, just like your mortgage, we're stuck. Uh, third penny sales tax. The thing there we want to talk about, at least right at the moment, is Sioux Metro. Uh, we don't have anything proposed for next year being a member, and I think it was 30 of the letters in there. Yeah, 36000 um, You know, having conversations with the Development Foundation, we really don't use Sioux Metro all that much, and I'm not sure that they're worth $37,000 in donations. So we kind of knew this was potential once we hired our own development director. Um, but, I mean, if somebody's really keen on keeping it, we certainly can, but I'm just not sure what the benefit is. They've, they've switched 
their business plan. You know, whereas uh, prior to, um, they provided their services free of charge. Now, if you want more upgraded service, you have to retain them on a retainer, and then you get assigned a development director from Sioux Metro. And we don't need that. So, you know, the, the services they offer us are, are pretty limited, if at all. I don't know how much Sioux Metro has really helped with any of the expansion of Rolvang, the industrial park. Um, you know, for instance, Marmon is expanding. Um, didn't get any assistance out of Sioux Metro. What's the extent of that uh, um, like I said in the past, uh, a much different setup in how they operated. You know, they would assist us with uh, attracting businesses. You know, they they uh, get us informed if they had a hot tip from a business that was looking to relocate. They'd help us with working through the financing of it. You know, any incentives that were being offered, they'd assist with. Not give us money, but they would help us with the process. They haven't really done much. Yeah, uh, no, Sioux Falls isn't, I don't think. Yeah, I think the vast majority of communities are for a while. There are a couple of the smaller ones that weren't. And I don't, I don't know who's in and out anymore. Um, we, we've been, we originally it was Minneha or Makita, Minneha Community Development and Lakita, Lincoln County. They merged a year ago, two years ago now, into Sioux Metro. So we've been in Makita since day one. So that's been probably. Looks like it might be Baltic, Brandon, Canton, Colton, Crook, Bell Rapids, Pearson, Harrisburg, Hartford, Lenox, Cedar Valley, and New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, they, you know, they used to be more like CCOG. You know, we pay our dues to CCOG of $13,000 a year. Any grants that we need written, CCOG writes for free. You know, and they provide that service. They provide, you know, until we had Patrick. Well, Patrick used to do it for us, the, the land use plans, uh, the zoning code stuff. That was all free from CCOG with our dues. So, you know, Sioux Metro has moved away from that model to if you want our services, you need to hire one of our staff members to be your development director. When you get the contract? I've got to check the contract. Yep. There's and they should be, I think they're doing interviews now. So that process, I would imagine, will be complete before we've got the budget done. And then the other thing out of the third penny sales tax, we talked a little bit about it, was architecture on the city hall, since architecture is a, a eligible expense out of the third penny sales tax. So we put it in there to take it out of the general fund, 
we can certainly put it back into the general fund if, if we're going to move forward with that ISG contract. And I know that's up for discussion probably at the next council meeting. Um, if we did that, we'd take it out of fund balances. That would be our recommendation. To do something. Two forty right at the moment. <clears throat> do your part. We'll, uh, we'll talk with the park committee about additional parkland probably in September, maybe October, or at least an idea of some. Street maintenance fund, uh, staff has already gone through and reviewed, as we talked a little bit last time, our, our revenue for next year is 840000 We're going to zero that account out this year, so there were some major changes in some of the proposed um, work to be done, primarily the mill and overlay out in the industrial park and that's the industrial the old industrial park south of the interstate going from a four inch to a two inch we'll save about two hundred thousand dollars and then curb and gutter asphalt hired repairs will be reduced we're still including patching and painting and signage and no slurry seal next year because we're doing the mill and overlay so yep slurry, slurry seal for next year is out yeah, so if you have the old budget, look at this two-page sheet. There's some changes on it. Uh, the bid, the convention center, we're working on decertifying that since the debt is paid. Not, yet. Not quite yet, but it's close. Um, so once that debt is paid, we need to decertify the TIF district, and that's a whole other issue that we won't get into in the budget session as to we own the conference center. We lease it to the Development Foundation who subleases it to Holiday Inn. How much is the Zero. Zero. So anyway, <laughs> we, we got a lot to work through there. Yes. Stormwater Fund. A model for citywide, just like we did for the water system. Uh, we got some drainage issues or areas to clean up, and that's kind of an ongoing thing. And then zeroscaping. The only issue we've got is we've got four hundred and seventy-five thousand in revenue, so we're going to have to take a look at taking something about eighty-two thousand out of there for the balance. Checking, there'll be a fund balance at the end of the year. So. Yeah. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, TIF 2, the conference center, just like we talked about with the bid. Um, Brandon 90 Plaza, we're anticipating 5,000 in TIF revenue. And the course in TIF number 6, about 2,000 in revenue. Capital projects. There we go. Core area phase 2A, just uh, that's done. Core area phase 2B in front of the, the mayor's house and Dogwood is almost completed, designed. So we're anticipating bidding that out November-ish. Actually, we could probably bid it out in October, but. Uh, and then Rushmore project phase two, that's just kind of the cleanup stuff that we try to, uh, it'd be nice if everything was done, but we always have some some little stuff here and there. Correct. Probably, uh, I would say minimum of three to five years. Yeah. You know, I'm. I'm
Yeah. All of this. Yeah, you know, you see a lot of communities will do, um, at least with their sewers, line the sewers with a impregnated material that aligns it and stops the, the leaks. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's also becoming a hazard, household hazardous material. But anyway, no, the pipes that are in the ground were probably installed. We, we don't, we're not quite sure when they were installed. Um, prior to 73. So since the water district and the sewer district were here before we were a city, um, I would assume that a lot of them were put in in the 50s. Clay tile, uh, especially in the sewer, so you've got offset joints, you've got roof problems. Really all the It's all the floor. same. The nice thing with clay tile and bad joints is we do lose some wastewater into the ground, so we don't have to pump it to Sioux Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Thus reducing our cost. <laughs> Uh, we got some in there for the Water Conservation Committee. Water fund, that is an enterprise fund. So it is funded solely out of the revenue from the water. We've got uh, well number six, VFD and controls. The big one there is the water treatment plant construction. We're anticipating 12 and a half million of that to be done. Uh, continuous modeling. That's where we uh, move some of that. Uh, the testing is over here as well. Meters, <clears throat> excuse me. Meters, we're looking at doing the next phase of replacing the water meters in town. And then purchasing for new homes. And Two left. Nope, five and six. And then we've got that exit 406 the water share 2625 for that. Now, if you remember, uh, our improvements are part of the DOT contract. So we're not hiring our own contractor to come in and do that and then schedule our contractor and their contractor. So it'll be under their contract and then they will send us a bill for it. We just have to give them the plans. Um, Administration, we've got our rebate program that's in place. That's been actually pretty, pretty good. We still have people coming in from time to time asking for rebates. Um, engineer bonds, that's a transfer out of the water fund to the general fund to pay for a third of the engineer's costs or wages and bennies as well as any costs associated for bonds for the past improvement projects. Our street light fund. Uh, the big one there is core 2B. So we're, as we redo the core or the projects, we, we put in new street lights as well and we pay for those. And then we would like to start changing over our high pressure sodium bulbs to LEDs. Um, yeah, city owned lights. Yeah, Sioux Valley's already changing over LEDs in the lights that we don't own, which is in the cores. Um, About a third. Yeah. Yeah, historically the LEDs were somewhat cost prohibitive to purchase because the, the payback wasn't, but that was when they were thinking LEDs only lasted, you know, five years or so, and they're lasting 10 plus. So, 
life expectancy has exceeded, the price has come down a little bit, and then if you save two thirds in utility costs. The only bad thing with LEDs is they don't melt snow. True. Uh, sewer fund. Purchase of a pickup, hopefully. <laughs> you you should have. And again, same thing with the transfer out with the engineer and the bonds. Collection and disposal. Uh, we've got some fairly large projects scheduled for next year. Number one, the pool lift station. Two, the east side main that serves the new elementary, or the, I shouldn't say proposed anymore, the new elementary school as well as Chestnut Ridge to the north. And then the phase one main to Sioux Falls. So about 8 million, 8.4 million if off the top of my head in debt that we're going to need to incur for the sewer department. And we're going to have to sit down and have some, some good discussions on surcharge versus volume charge on how we want to recoup that. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a wash either way as far as what the monthly bill would be to a normal, typical consumer. Uh, but it does have an impact on our debt capacity. So... Uh, if we do a surcharge, it doesn't count against our debt capacity. If we do the volume charge, it does. Yep. Correct. Yep. So I'm trying to look at the, the, the communities that I normally look at, and there's about 10 of them. I'm trying to get the information. Our county is very good about tax information. Some counties aren't. You, you, yeah, you can't find tax rates anywhere on their website. So I'm looking at those, those communities and comparing our property taxes as well as our sewer and water bills. Um, you know, we always hear that, oh, Brandon's so expensive to live in, et cetera, et cetera. We're pretty much average so far. Because our taxes are quite a bit, I shouldn't say quite a bit, our taxes offset the increase in utility costs. You know, and, and, and people still assume and make the assumption that uh, 100 we get 100% of their property taxes, which we would love. We wouldn't have an issue then. Uh, the, the, the ones I, that are closest to it, Vermilion, Spearfish, um, I'll throw in Mitchell, Sturgis. I include Harrisburg, B. Um, Brookings is kind of getting out there. Yankton, um, Huron, Aberdeen, I think, is a little bit too big. Mm, I don't think they're that big. Mid teens, 16 to 18, maybe. Yeah. Spearfish is, is 11.5, just kind of same as us. And Vermilion, they're pretty close to us as well. <coughs> the only difference there is both of them have a college in town, whereas we don't. But um, that's kind of my comparable cities that I look at. Is it? Okay. The ones we need to borrow for would be the pool lift, east side, and the phase one main Sioux Falls. Obviously, we'd borrow them in 24. We want to really affect rates until 25. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a jump again, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So, what would happen if we don't do that? Well, start with the pool lift station. That's a little bit undersized due to just an Oakland subdivision as well as the pool and the water treatment plant. Um, 
I'm not sure what if we didn't do it. No, it's a whole new first station. If we don't do the east side main, then I suppose that would fall back on the school and the developer of Chestnut Ridge to install that. And the force main to Sioux Falls, uh, the current force main that is there has been there since the early 90s and is about at 80% capacity, roughly, or more. So the, the triggers with utilities is usually 80%. Once you hit 80% capacity, you need to be under design. 90% capacity, you want to build. So we don't have much of a choice to install another line to Sioux Falls. Um, yes. That, that, really? Nobody's in, nobody's in favor of that? Wow. <laughs> Listen, this is just stage one, so mm -hmm. this will not get us the line. This is just... This is just a start. A start. Uh, million dollars is just a start. Yep. Yeah. I think so total... Is overall, is total about $14 million? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So total about $14 million overall. Historically, um, developers have put in the infrastructure they've needed for their subdivisions. Now, we did it out west. Not this. We're, we're extending the main from Augusta, basically. Now, we'll need, to, we'll need to calculate connection fees or impact fees or whatever we want to call them. Development fees for both all of the property that this main will serve. Now, originally, we had we're going to extend this all the way up to Redwood, but we've cut it down to basically the north property line of the school. So we're we just doing it. the main. They have to hook up to the yep. They have to take it from their building to the main. So I, I, you know, I think this will probably be the last main that we extend. So. Chestnut Ridge, Aspen Ridge, they're installing, they're connecting to our system. Aspen Ridge is. Yep. But. I think Chestnut Ridge is 400 units, and then, yep, and then Aspen Ridge is probably comparable between their single families and multiples. So that's a discussion that we'll, we'll uh, have in the near future. 
golf course. Golf course is an enterprise fund. Uh, proposed there is a new assistant manager in the clubhouse since we seem to be setting records. This is maintenance. Oh, yeah. And then uh, on the first page, which I skipped, golf course maintenance, a uh, couple things there, uh, two greens mowers at 62.5 each. Now, anything that we, anything um, expenditures over revenue in the golf course, we transfer out of the general fund. So that's included as a general fund expenditure. So any, basically any cuts at the, to the, golf course will reduce the transfer out from the general fund. And historically, operations and maintenance uh, is covered by revenues at the golf course, debt and capital equipment, capital purchases of anything, whether it's the wall or equipment, is covered with general fund transfer. Where is that? Where is the debt's gone. Debt's gone. No, Correct. Well, there's well, still debt. The, yeah, the, okay. the clubhouse is gone. Yeah, there's still debt. The clubhouse debt is gone. But we still have uh, equipment, equipment and carts, carts and et cetera. The unfortunate part is these mowers have doubled in the last yeah, the three years. So there, there'll be a change in the budget and the accounting at the golf course for next year. We would like to combine the lounge and the community room. The staff moves back and forth between the two. And it kind of, it's easier on inventory and everything else because does the beer get sold upstairs or downstairs, et cetera. So that'll be a change in the accounting portion of it. If you look on to page, last page of the golf course, Clubhouse building expenses. A couple of things. One, we need to paint the exterior of the clubhouse and the deck. If you look at it, it's 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 time. Um, and then it's time also since we're we're kind of updating uh, new lounge tables and chairs. Uh, the early two thousands style is. Yes. Thank you.
Some of us give golf up because it's too frustrating. Well, you don't play with most people? You pick it up. I did. I got worse. Oh. I got worse. Yeah, so now we're going to get here. Well, that's what, so if that works out, but the, the challenge would be that they can't, I don't think the club drinker will be able to get out. We can't. 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 We can not 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 we
So that's it for the 2024 budget requested. Silence the sound. So, you know, 200,000, 208,000 sounds like a lot, but quite frankly, uh, it's not a lot. Uh, we've come into this meeting with over a million that needed to be cut prior to. So. This is where you requested. It's all departments kind yep. of request. So this, we're always coming in kind of in the negative, kind of go over it. And Brian, and my, Brian and I have always already kind of thought of things that can be adjusted and changed. So it's and not one one thing that, that helps quite a bit with this is the CIP. Yeah. You know, that was always the big discussion in previous budgets was we'd have listed everything that was in the CIP plan or potential to be in the CIP plan and we had millions to, to take out. So the CIP plan certainly helps um, bring the budget in better. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm taking a look at uh, trying to do some revenue projections for the next five years anyway, because you know I've told you before, once you get projections out past five years, it's a guess. And even out five years makes me question it. So looking at historical numbers, and I'm trying to give you a range for sales tax and property tax projected revenue for the next five years, give you a, a very conservative estimate, and then one based upon probably historical numbers. So. We'll get those numbers. I've got that spreadsheet almost done. Um, so between the comparison of comparable communities and those projections, we can take a look at some numbers. Yes, and any new business that comes in, retail business is going to be a plus. Um, it's just very difficult to project what that plus is going to be. You know, with Fairway, talking with them, they're, they're planning on, on turning dirt next spring. So anticipating that they get done towards the end of the year. But if you look at 2025, is it going to double our food purchases in town? No. The, the pie will get a little bit bigger. I just don't know how big it's going to get. Um, hopefully a lot bigger. would be awesome. Uh, I think uh, Quick Stop will... Star, Quick Star. I was just in Minnesota yesterday, so it's Quick Stop. Um, we'll probably have more of a, a new dollar, new sales tax dollars coming in than, than a grocery store. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily think so. Maybe Casey's. Um. Yeah, they're they're a small grocery store. I, I kind of look at Quick Star. The folks in the Bluffs are going to use it quite a bit. The folks in my neighborhood, I stop at Expressway because yeah. it's the closest. So I don't. Yep. Yep. So, you know, Brandon 90 Plaza. I don't know. Uh, yep, we're done. So like I said, if you've got any suggestions you want us to take a look at, uh, give us a holler.